Hello and welcome to today's Daily Summation. I am Kurt. I am your host on the Daily Summation for Kurt's Religion and Politics. Welcome aboard if you're joining me on YouTube Rumble or the podcast. I uh, hope you're having a good day. My day has been very rushed and rather difficult, so I'm kind of shooting off this video very quickly today. I wanted to talk about the subject of a upcoming blog, blog uh, entry that I wanted to take more time on than I really have at the moment. But I'm going to go ahead and write a blog entry. So the blog entry may be a little bit different in what it says. I hope it'll, I'll be able to make it more in-depth than what I'm going to give you in this video. Uh, again, the video is on the idea of Christianity and borders. And I wanted to take just a second and address an idea that people have tried to put forth that is not really a correct idea. So I had somebody recently in comment to something that I said, in response to something that I said, say that Christianity was supposed to be all-encompassing. Everybody's supposed to be encompassed in Christianity, Greek, Jew, Gentile. And they got this from the Bible, right? Well, it's not too surprising that people misconstrue, misunderstand the message that's found in that text. So let me give you just a second and explain, or take just a second, and explain why it is that what that person was assuming to be correct is not. It is not correct. Here's the deal. Jesus, when he's asked at some point about something, and I don't even recall what it was, basically says this. He says, look, you think I've come here to bring everybody together and sing Kumbaya around the campfire, basically. You know, but, but make no mistake, I'm here to pit brother against brother and father against son and so forth and so on. What was he talking about? Why would he say such a thing? Well, the answer is really pretty simple. It is that what Jesus was trying to do was get people who were believers to take a stand and to be who they were, regardless of what sort of misfortune or problems beset them in this life. And look, if you want to see how bad that gets... Uh, by all means, check out uh, uh, Richard Wormbrand's stuff, and you'll see exactly how bad that gets. He he got to, he bore the brunt of a lot of that sort of thing, and a lot of the people that he talks about uh, also do likewise, right? The, uh, I'm trying to think of the site's name, uh, but anyway, the the point is that there are literally people out there every day who are kicked out of their houses, who have nowhere to go, and all because they profess Christ. Here's the thing. You can like it or not. When you differ from other people, you're setting up what amount to walls, what amount to borders. That's a, that's a common thing. Is it wrong for you to differ from other people? Well, you shouldn't do it because you can, but if you're sure that what you believe is correct, no, it's not wrong to differ or disagree with other people. That's not, a, that's not a true thing. Okay? And so the point that I'm making here is simple. If you differ in how you think and believe from other people, you will set up borders between you and those people. When people are of a like mind, they will come together as a community and, quite frankly, they will set up borders around themselves in order to separate themselves from other people. Now, let's be clear on this. When I say they'll set up borders, what I'm not saying is they won't deal with those other people on any basis or measure at, in any measure at all. What I'm saying is that they will do so in ways that make sense, that are reasonable, and that are proper. But here's the thing, like I say, you think that because Christians are supposed to be accepting and forgiving of other people, that means that they don't set up borders. But what you need to understand is, Paul the Apostle, Saul of Tarsus, who later became known as Paul the Apostle, literally said, I am giving this person over to Satan for the destruction of their flesh. And his point was to say, I want this person to come out more perfect as a result of this. It wasn't I'm trying to laugh, ha ha, oh, this person is, is going to uh, die or whatever. Uh, at one point, there's a statement, uh, essentially, uh, that 
you should do good to those that abuse you and, and persecute you and so, so forth, for in doing so you will heap coals of fire onto their heads. And I don't I don't remember if that's the exact words, but you get the idea. Why are you doing that? Are you doing that because you want for those individuals to suffer horribly? No. In fact, you're doing that because you know that in who those people choose to be, they are suffering. And what you're trying to do is alleviate that suffering. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to bring them to a correct and proper place. That was, that was what Paul was doing when he gave whoever it was over uh, for the destruction of his flesh. That's what was meant by the heaping coals, burning coals of fire, however it was particularly put on somebody's head by, by doing good when they despitefully use you. That's what was meant by those things. But the point of all of this, when it comes down on all of this, the point is this. Christianity supports the idea of borders. It supports the idea of borders. It doesn't support the idea of racism. Okay? That's a different thing entirely. It does support the idea of disagreement with and separation from, for example, Islam. For example, Buddhism, for example, Taoism, for example, Confucianism even, right? It does support separation from those things, and it does support what amounts to borders with regard to those things, whether the borders are physical ones or they're something that actually is within the person who sets up those stop points, those places where people have to stop, right? Christianity does support borders. And the idea of neither Greek nor Jew nor Gentile was intended to be among Christians, okay? It was intended to say, I don't care if the person started out as a Gentile. I don't care if they started out as a Jew. I don't care if they started out as a Greek. What they are now is a believer in Christ and in God as a general thing. That's what was intended by that statement. The statement was not intended to say you should accept, you should allow everything that happens around you to do exactly that. It was intended to say you should accept those people who are acting as agents of Jesus called Christ, the Son mentioned in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is what that was intended to do. It was never, never, never meant to be the case that we were all just supposed to try in every way to get along with everyone else. Now, let's be clear about something. There's a particular place where it says, look, you should try and get along with your fellows in as much as you're able. But you have to know that I'm pretty sure it was the guy who said that who ultimately was martyred for the cause of his belief. Does that sound like getting along with uh, your, your fellows in all circumstances? On the other hand, does that mean that he was saying you shouldn't try to get along with others as a general thing? Well, of course, you're supposed to try and get along with others. You're supposed to live within the law of the land where higher law doesn't uh, overrule that law of the land, right? But when somebody tells me, you have to renounce Jesus in order for you to be a part of our little society, my answer, I'm sorry to tell you, well, I'm not so sorry to tell you, my answer is no. And I don't care what you do to me as a result. If you tell me I have to go to war against my fellow man in order to be a part of your little society, and I happen to believe that I'm not supposed to be going to war with anybody without without particular cause, my answer to you is no. And if that means that I have to go to jail or have to be despitefully used as a result of that, then that's what needs to happen. So does Christianity support borders? The answer is yes, yes it does. And more importantly, Christianity says that the borders that exist between one society and another aren't put there by Christians to begin with. They're put there by the society. 
And Christians really are not technically a part of that society. Okay, so all of this having been said, I am getting to the point where I'm about ready to wrap this video up. So I just wanted to wish you a great day and hope that the day for you has been a little bit less hectic than it has for me. But sometimes I guess hectic can be good. It's a beautiful day here and hopefully it will continue to be so and things will continue to move in good directions for me. And hopefully, of course, they will continue to move in directions for you, good directions for you as well. I should be back again tomorrow. That will be Wednesday the 4th. Don't forget, today is the last day that you can technically legally vote in the United States, being November the 3rd and Tuesday. Uh, hopefully you are doing well, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schubert. This video was recorded on Tuesday, November the 3rd of 2020. The Daily Summation is created for Kurt's religion and politics. Thanks for checking out this video. Remember that you can like it on YouTube and you can give it a rumble on Rumble if you want to do that. Uh, I have channels on both YouTube and Rumble. They are the Kurtz Religion and Politics channels. You can subscribe to either one of those if you want to do so. Remember, if you subscribe on YouTube, you probably want to click the notification bell in order to be notified of new content. Um, if you want to see more from me, you can check me out on my blog. That's blogs.kpshubert.com, blogs.kpshubert.com. You can also see my Facebook page, that is uh, Kurt's Religion and Politics on Facebook. You can check out my Twitter, Twitter, uh, Parlor, and Minds.com accounts. My handle on all three of those is at KP Schubert. That's at K-P-S-H-U-B-E-R-T. You can um, check out my podcast. The podcast is at podcasts.kpshubert.com. That's podcasts.kpshubert.com. And finally, you can check me out on Patreon. And if you want to support me, that's probably one of the better places that you can do that. I am Kurt's Religion and Politics there. Thanks again for checking out this video, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow.